Hi right, guys, I'm gonna begin. I mean, I just sort of well, just before as I was just sort of saying before the interview about I kind of love the kind of tone of this. One of the things that really struck me uh, about this show was how serious it was, and I don't mean that in a sense that it was sort of like it didn't have any kind of humor to it, but it took the matter of uh, of the character situations really kind of seriously. And I think you know, I sort of grew up. I remember. Pele used to do adverts about um, at promoting sort of Viagra and loads of people used to kind of give him stick for it and stuff like that. And it feels like there's always been a kind of a punchline attached when people talk about Viagra. And I just wondered about if that's something that came across right from the very offset. I'll start with you, uh, Stefan, about the, uh, just about kind of the, 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 the how serious it, and it, it sort of treated the kind of subject matter. And if that was a big part of what attracted you to getting involved. Yes, definitely. I think it gets the balance right. I think, I mean, anybody I've mentioned that I've done this to or that is coming out or whatever, um, inevitably there's a kind of chuckle and they go, oh yeah, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know. Um, it just has that element, you know, I mean, and so inevitably there's going to be some humour, I think. Um, and I think it would have been a mistake to only make it serious. So if it had, if, if it had tried to be a film that um, ignored the fact that there's there's going to be humour and warmth around this subject, and that would have been a mistake. But equally, if it had just been an, um, uh, a, a broad nudge, nudge, carry on type comedy about, ooh, Mrs. This drug has been discovered and look what you can do with this now, you know, then that would also be a mistake. So I think it gets the balance just right, like Goldilocks, you know. And um, uh, what, what we do have is within what can sometimes be a, a, a chuckling subject. You know, we have a very deep and sensitive subject, which is handled very well, I think. And and that, um, you know, that, 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 that a, a very simple medical issue with a very simple medical cure, ultimately, um, is the catalyst for a story about um, very much deeper issues, actually, in terms of um, psychological, you know, mental health and asking for help and, and and how men do communicate with each other and and reach out. Yeah, because I mean, you mentioned about the kind of backstories. I just wanted to sort of both for both of you really, because every character kind of comes into this, and we kind of meet them in the here and now, as we do with kind of many films and TV shows. But there's so much backstory to them. I mean, they both come with so much kind of baggage and a whole life before this show. And I just wondered if you both. So do you, do you have a process in that regard? Do you, do you create backstories to characters? Is that something that you do in every role or is it a project by project kind of thing? What's the process like in on that regard? Uh, well, um, to work with my on-screen wife, for example, we, we, we met up and we, we, we started to bond and, and gel and chat about the piece with the director. There were a couple of meetings and, um, and there was a, a bit of backstory done just so that we can have a collective understanding. So we were on the same page going in, because obviously if my backstory was different to hers, you know, things wouldn't go so smoothly. Um, so um, there was chat about that and, and meetings with the director. Um, and that proved to be very useful, as you can imagine. Um, but no more than that, really, in terms of once that was done, we were ready and happy to go into the 90 minutes um, and, and start filming. Yeah, for me, it, it, it'll vary from job to job. It'll, it'll depend on the project, whether, you know, whether it's a film, a TV, a play or whatever. In this particular instance, I mean, I'm from uh, Swansea. I was born in Morriston Hospital where this trial took place, you know. So I, I knew the area and I knew the kind of people involved more than anything I can do almost, you know. So inevitably, I found myself wondering who this man was in 1994, you know exactly what part of Swansea he was from what sort of you know what, what sort of area what suburb you know what what his job was maybe I would know you know I kind of thought of exactly the place where he worked for example you know not just in a general sense you know that was inevitable just because I know it so well so um that was very interesting actually for me to do and and that kind of really helped me find who he was in a in a detailed sense rather than in you know in a broader way because they are they are very detailed. I think they do have, and that, and that's you know what was really nice is that they're all. I mean, Iwan, bless him, you know the 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 fresh faced youngster, but even he's knocking forty now, you know. So with the rest of us, uh, the grey beards, you know, um, it was uh, <laughs> really, really nice to do a story amongst us with of of men who who have really got a history and have really lived some life already, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got a real sense from watching it. It felt like a bit of a band of brothers on this. So, you know, was, was that kind of, it was that the case? And is that especially true when you kind of go out and shoot on location and sort of go and all live in kind of hotels or apartments as opposed to working in kind of studios in, in London and stuff? 
Yeah, that can be the case. Um, uh, although we weren't really on location because we all have our own places in Wales. Um, but nevertheless, it still carries more of that sense of community and togetherness than you might have uh, in London um, or when you're on tour. Um, we we all have a we all have a um, quite a deep connection with Wales, and we've all we've all met each other uh, on different gigs and stuff. It, there's something far more intimate cozy warm and friendly about gigs in wales i feel like i'm coming home and i have like a you know a nice exhale and i look forward to that aspect of it and especially for this piece because um because that's what that was definitely needed as as an ingredient you know in in the actual storytelling we wanted people to feel that um and and so that's quite effortlessly done yeah i i mean you know, one of the most uh, entertaining places, really, it, for me, is is a, a green room or a waiting area where there's a bunch of actors hanging around on set waiting. You know, because there's often very, you know, very entertaining people. But when you put the ingredients of that, of that we're all Welsh, that we've all got the same same kind of, you know, odd sense of Welsh humour, but also that many of us know each other and have worked with each other many times. And in my case, some great, very strong, you know, old friends, Lisa Palfrey and Mark Lewis-Jones particularly, and, you know, and Joanna Page, I guess, as well, from Gavin and Stacey, you know, we've worked with each other a lot and, um, no, and most of us know each other very well from projects like this. So... There was a, a great uh, camaraderie and a great sense of, um, and, and especially when you come together, it's different from doing an episode of a TV thing, I find. I don't know how you feel, pal, but um, whenever I do a, a, a TV film or, or a feature film like this, there's a sense of of all being, pulling together for a single project, you know, that you, you, you're not on a treadmill of TV, you know, and there's a, and there's a gr greater sense of camaraderie in that, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm. there's, there's something, and I, I don't mean this to sound like patronising or anything, but there's something very gentle and warm about Wales on screen, I find. And and, and in person as well, I've got Welsh family as well. And the, the characters, you look at kind of comedies like Gavin and Stacey or films like Pride or, or, or Men Up as well. There's a kind of quite earnest, quite sincere humanity, I think, within all the characters and the communities we enter into. Is that true of the Wales that you both know? Yeah, Wales for me has, has always had a very soft um and um charming uh honest approach to uh to life and and uh, to the, as i've grown up there i mean because it's either been london or wales that i'm pretty much um from but my family are indo-caribbean from guyana so these are these can be quite brusque um um it can have a kind of a brusque nature about it and um uh there were certain lines I was reading in the script and I was thinking this, the, the, the accent alone is going to do so much for some of this dialogue. You know, it's a very unique, it's a very unique charm and sound. Um, and it can really ping out um, certain things in, in dialogue, uh, you know, and um, I was very much looking forward to seeing that and executing some of that myself. <laughs> uh, um, I, I would agree really. I think that is, I don't know. You can only speak as it from what you know. I guess I, I most people would say this, but there's, I think there is a particular warmth uh, amongst Welsh people, and that's been, you know, it's often commented on. My partner is Israeli, and she's been, um, you know, there've been times in my, in with my family that where there've been family tragedy situations where we've all, you know, been sat when we sat in my mum's house or whatever, and. And she's often been taken aback at the sort of darkness <laughs> of humour sometimes <laughs> around family. You know what I mean? But but with that darkness comes a real warmth and and uh, and, and a great sense of love and connection as well. Well, the subject of, of family, I wonder, because I was speaking to an actor last week for a BBC show called Craig Fairbrass for a show, a great show called Bo Boat Story. And obviously that kept, that sort of launched on the BBC last weekend. And I was asking if he still, even as an experienced actor, both as you two are, you've been doing this for kind of a number of years now. When you have a show coming on the BBC or, you know, or, or any, any kind of sort of channel for that matter, do you still get everyone around the telly for like, a, do you make a night of it? Or is that is that something that after a while you just kind of, you get a bit used to? Well, with my family, they, they they love it. They 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 love coming along for the ride. They get very excited. Um, and um, uh, even <laughs> the last thing I did was a, uh, I filmed a I filmed a, a, a series in New York called Full Circle, 
and um, they 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 kindly invited me over to the Tribeca premiere. And when my mum, dad, and sister found out I had three tickets, they were like booking flights already. They were on their way, so they love it, you know. And um and and I think when it's something is uh, as 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 unique and as special as this gig is, because a ninety minute one off has a different kind of it couches itself differently in uh, in on television and for your friends and family. You know, it's a one off. And so it's even more sort of special and poignant. So I know they're very much looking forward to um, checking it out with me on, you know, with a glass of port or whatever it's going to be. Um, I would say from what is left of my family that, no, I think we've all become a little bit kind of, uh, you know, selective TV watchers at whatever time suits us, which, you know, is becoming really, let's face it. And uh, um, there's very little... Um, but I think Christmas is different, and I think Christmas is a time when people do sit down. I have to say, though, the, the one thing about your question that did make me think is that whatever platform things are on, and it could be on the biggest in the world, like Disney Plus or Apple or Paramount or whatever, HBO or whatever, when something in this country is on the BBC, it does make it kind of special, because you know that BBC iPlayer or just BBC TV is something that everyone has, and that um whatever you know the the world profile of a particular show in this country if a, if something is on bbc prime time then it's kind of special and i'm i'm always really chuffed to be involved in something that is going to be bbc prime time you know no, 100% agree. I've only got time for one more question. I was just going to ask, because just going back to the the kind of the main theme, of course, of the show, uh, um, of the film, I should say, um, it is still, even though, you know, it, we, we're now, there is, a, we've made progress. We're, we're now talking about things that we still, we, we wouldn't have been talking about many years ago. And it does feel like society is constantly kind of moving in the right direction. Speaking about kind of um, uh, issues like this and erectile dysfunction and stuff, it's still a taboo for many people. I wondered if you're hoping something like this can help break through and it's still ignite and continue on a conversation and also the second part of the question is it does also show the kind of power of storytelling and, and films and how they can have profound effects on kind of audiences i wondered if either of you have ever had a, a meaningful exchange with a fan of something you've, you've made well on, on on any particular gig you mean yeah or... on any particular gig yeah yeah there have been some people who have come to see theater shows um uh it's happened i think the the I, the one the, the one that springs to mind is theater um and it was about um it was a very dark show about um you know grooming and sexual abuse and there was a an, a much older teenage girl who had come to see it you know and um afterwards to to be able to to meet us chat to us about it there was definitely something cathartic and healing going on um i think that is the point of storytelling it's uh i believe it was jez butterworth who said that um theaters are our modern day churches where people come together to work out their problems um it's kind of interesting when you think about how something fictional like this can lead someone to tattoo some lyrics on their arm and change the whole trajectory of their life or a scene in a film because so it's it's really um it's a very very important job for that reason it helps us shine a torch on on our options in life and then decide what choices we're going to make that's what storytelling can do you know um and with regards to this piece that is definitely there i think um to get that cocktail right where just because you make light of a issue doesn't mean you take the issue lightly i think it's done that brilliantly um and um uh yeah that that would be my answer to that question i think um and just to, yeah just to finish off on that i i mean all, all i would say is that yeah i agree that storytelling is in whatever form whether it's a film like this or whether it's great tv or, or particular particularly as part that said in theater sometimes um there's a a, a real power to to ex the expression of vulnerability whatever the subject is and i think this film does that brilliantly that it's I mean, it could it could be quite a boring story almost of, a, you know, oh, there was this medical need, there was a medical trial for this drug and it met that need and there you go, fine. But we see through the, the nuance of the five different stories that it, that life is never as simple as that and that um, and, and that opening up uh, for whatever the issue um, to one's vulnerability is is where there's growth and, you know, hopefully that it, it'll help people realise that. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for your time today, guys. It's been a real thank pleasure you. speaking to you both. And I hope, yeah, I hope you do enjoy your, your nights watching this with the, with the family. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys!